storms have really stripped for the river it's dropped really clear but it's it's still cold the fish are still lethargic so hopefully just maybe to try and get a bit more depth and float keep them going through and hopefully we'll find something usually grain and like to Troll together in the, in the winter, find deeper water out just on the edge of the main current. The way in this river is terrible. I mean, it's the combination of, of gritstone windsill and sand and limestone, it just seems to form a boulders, it's like cannonballs. I think a good friend, a fisherman friend, said, described it as wading on the schools of dead fishermen at times. And <laughs> I know a friend refuses to fish it because it says it's always, this river always tries to kill him. But <laughs> it's, it's not that bad. Actually, this stretch is better than most. Yes, I'm in. Mean. That was it, just... Just holding it back a little bit in the current, fluttering it. It's a good fish. When the, these beautiful grayling, that when they get into this fast current and they use the big dorsal fins, it's like the sail through the current, like a yacht. It's cutting through it. Oh. That head bump, a big kick. And for some reason, I don't know why, but I love catching them on the fly, but they seem to put up such more of a struggle on the while trotting. Oh, dear me. This is a good fish. I'm always scared of losing it. Let's hope it's a grayling and not a big early season trout. No, I think it's a grayling. Oh, yeah. Shows a few signs of uh, maybe an attack from a, a cormorant or something in his past. Beautiful fish. It's a female fish by, I think, by the size of its dorsal. Calm down, the hook's falling out naturally. What a fish. Well, that's a good way of starting the day. I think over the last maybe 10 years, I would say, um, my world shrank in a funny kind of way. Not just because of uh, lockdown situations and things like that, but because I think I've become more and more just exploring more of the landscape around me for my photography and my filmmaking. And the more I seem to explore this dale, uh, the more I, I, I discover in it's all these little corners. It's just a huge hinterland of rolling moor and fell side. And there's everywhere is 
just scope. Fantastic snarl trees, old industrial ruins, abandoned farmhouses, and of course this beautiful river. There's, and all the small tributaries that flow into it. It's It's, it's just an infinitive amount of, of space to explore, really, in a way. And each time I see it in a different light. Each winter it changes slightly. And I find something new that I hadn't discovered before. Uh, and if it's kind of this marginal kind of winter and spring that, I, that really draw me, I think. When autumn, winter, spring. The light is, you've got the low lights, you've got the snow or ice, you've got the fells come out in such brilliant colours, contrasts, or the dying, or the heather, or the bracken. Yeah, that last fish was a fantastic, fantastic grilling. So pleased to connect with that. 18 inches, beautiful condition, big male fish with a just big striking dorsal, beautiful colours. Like platinum and going into like pewter on the back, something about them. I mean, love the connection as well with this river. <sighs> Nearly. Love the connection with this river and the, and the Galena ore they used to mine, the London Lead Company, which basically built Midland Teesdale up the river. They perfected, they, they perfected a way and patented it of extracting silver. Because in, every, in, in all Galena ore, there's a certain amount of silver, small percentage of silver as well as lead. So the London Lead Company perfected a way of extracting the silver. So I love that connection with this river. You have that sort of raw essence. It's still here. It's almost in the grayling itself. So, but that was a beautiful fish. The strength of it as well, this time of year, with this in tip top condition. Just perfect to be out here now, fishing for them. See if we can catch another one. I'm sure there's more here. I'm sure of it.
stepping now, the rain set back in. I think this is in to stay for the night. Hopefully it won't uh, affect the rivers too much. We can come back tomorrow. We can come back tomorrow and uh, try again. Just one more cast for good luck. And I think I'm gonna call it quits. Get back home or maybe call in the pub and have a pint. Try and thaw out a little bit. I think something just keeps you going for one last cast. Try again. Yeah, looking fantastic. See the hills. Before yesterday, we're still covered, sort of shrouded in cloud and mist. So, I think we should have a good day today. Well, that was a bit of a turn up for the books. Second cast through, one massive wild brownie. I think there, there hasn't been any stocking in this in this part of the river for a very very long time. So I'm pretty sure, pretty confident that was a wild fish. Um, and they've been getting bigger and bigger the last few seasons. That, but even though it was still 28 days off the beginning of the season, it was in tip top condition, absolutely. Beautiful Nick. So that's a, a fish for the future. That could be that could be maybe four or five pounder by the end of this by the end of the trout season. But what a fish. I just can't believe how different today was from yesterday. It was such a massive contrast. It just, it's just sort of, sort of typical Pennine Dales weather. Like literally went from sort of gray, the river being pewter, dark, heavy rain clouds, hill fog, to this, to just a, blue skies all day, crisp clear air. What a contrast, but the, the fit, even though it was a pretty drake day, pretty miserable, it's still fish feeding. There's still, there's still grain to be caught. So, and that the best one of the day, the best one of the last couple of days was yesterday, was an absolutely stunning fish of about 
nearly two pounds and yeah absolutely just a joy to catch and to see it swim back was just fantastic lovely big healthy fish be spawning in a couple of months time hopefully producing a newer generation of grilling for the teeth.